Hello friends, it's Greg here on the Blue Feather Ephemera channel. I have an eBay store by the same name where I sell vintage magazine print advertising and each week we take a look at sales and then we also address a bonus topic. This past week I sold 18 items for $291.86. Then we're going to take a quick look at how the common practice of ending listings and then posting them again as sell similar items made a big difference in my eBay numbers. So stay tuned for that. Let's take a look at those ads right now. Here's a 1933 advertisement for palm olive soap, and it shows a bar of soap there in a test tube, and that gives you an idea of the amount of olive oil that goes into each bar of soap. The model there is a, a woman in a nice crimson evening gown. She's looking in the mirror, ready to go out for a night on the town. $18.77 sent this ad to a buyer in New Jersey. This is not a print advertisement that's on the screen. It's one of those uh, magazine prints that I sell. This one from 1936, if memory serves correctly, this is the inaugural issue of Life Magazine. And here it shows Chinese American Catholic students. And these children, it says there's eight little girls that are getting ready to go into the school and they're taking a last peek at their lessons before they go in. Uh, it does, uh, in the caption here, it says that they wear embroidered tunics and beaded ornaments in their hair. We'll take a quick look at those little outfits on the Chinese American children. Nice little print, uh, uh, magazine print. And $28.77 sent this to a buyer in California with free shipping. You probably know by now, I appreciate my cars. And here's a great ad from 1956 for the Ford Thunderbird. And it appeared in Road and Track Magazine. In the detail here, it says it hits tedium like TNT hits confetti. It calls it a mink coat for father. And it says what a mink coat does for a lady, a Thunderbird does for a male. $18.77 sent this advertisement to a buyer in Florida. Here's a great advertisement for Lane Cedar Chest. This is from 1956, Better Homes and Gardens. It shows here in the ad some of that mid-century modern styling that we talk about. It's got uh, doors that, while well, they're textured, they put you in mind of louvered doors and the chevron-shaped handles, and it's got the pencil legs on it and all of those things that we really like from that era as far as style goes. But uh, beautiful ad, $16.77 sent this advertisement to a buyer in Oregon. Next, we're going to talk about a pair of advertisements from 1953. Both of these appeared in the Quartermaster Review magazine. Both advertisements are for a brand called Super Soft Drinks, and the company name is Cantrell and Cochrane Corporation. And we'll take a little bit closer look here. On the screen, you can see their lineup of uh, soft drinks. They've got uh, cola with a unique spelling, ginger ale, root beer, club soda, and grape soda. There's a lot to say about the cool factor of these advertisements here. Uh, this one shows a, a little bit more detail of the can. And by studying these ads, you can see the evolution of packaging over the years. In the 1940s, any kind of canned drink was in a can that you'd need a, a can opener to punch a hole in. This can is made more like a bottle with a uh, cap that's like a bottle cap. But this advertisement was marketed primarily to the military. And, of course, it being in the Quartermaster Review publication, that makes sense. At the top, it says commissaries and exchanges. Shows the picture of the soldier there. 
and uh, it talks about the same five great flavors or five super flavors. The first one that I showed you, I sold for sixteen seventy seven. This one I priced at eighteen seventy seven. They're both going to a buyer in Vermont. Now the difference in the pricing, probably just the frame of mind I was in that day. Here's a neat advertisement from 1944. This appeared in National Geographic magazine. It's for New York Central Railroad. And it talks about the challenges of the wartime years. And it goes into some detail there about what it takes to service a train, making extra beds, uh, uh, cleaning the trains inside and out, safety inspections, service work. And it says that the New York Central Railroad has 25,600 men in uniform. And so they've hired thousands of women to help with that work. It also mentions they have to bring in ice and groceries and all of that. The illustration in this advertisement has cutaway diagrams of some of the trains. And it shows the work that's being done by those workers that it mentioned. Talks about air conditioner service, light bulbs being checked and changed, linens being changed, windows being cleaned, 6,500 pounds of ice, and all of the other details that goes into managing a railroad during war. Uh, at the bottom, you can send for a free booklet with fascinating cutaway pictures that takes you inside a locomotive cab, troop train, caboose, hospital car, and the Grand Central Terminal, and other places behind the scenes. $14.77 sent this advertisement to New York. Here's another advertisement from National Geographic magazine. This one ran in 1981. It's for a Nikon FE camera. It says it's a camera to stir your emotions. There's not a lot of frills or fluff to this advertisement. It's just a basic image and a little bit of detail about uh, uh, the camera taking razor sharp pictures using Nikon's superb lenses. It says it's a modern 35 millimeter camera with auto advance. $12.77 sent this advertisement to a buyer in New York. This advertisement appeared in Life Magazine in 1952. It's for a company called Natural Bridge Shoes. That company is based in Lynchburg, Virginia, right near one of those geologic formations called a natural bridge. And, of course, they made a park out of it. Depending on how it's situated, those uh, formations where the softer sedimentary rock at lower elevations erodes more quickly than the stone at the top. And so you end up with what might be a, called an archway or a log rock, or depending on how it's situated in the terrain, it may be like a bridge. In this advertisement, it goes into some detail about the uh, styles of shoes that they have available, the Muncie, the Dip, and the Windy. It says here, Natural Bridge Shoes, Smarter Shoes for Natural Walking. $10.77 sent this to Lynchburg, Virginia, back to its city of origin. In past videos, I talked about how I sometimes use only a portion of the advertisement in the main listing picture, this is another example of that because it just has more visual interest. But it's a half page ad for a company called Whitehead Metal Products, and it's showing here an image of a Monel kitchen sink. The advertisement says transform your old kitchen. And it tells you that you can get rid of your battle-scarred sink and improve your kitchen's appearance for only $124.50. $8.77 sent this advertisement to a buyer in Pennsylvania. This appeared in Woman's Home Companion, 1937.
Next up, we have a full five pages of a parody about Boy Scouts, and this appeared in Playboy magazine in the 1980s. Somehow enlisting, I lost track of the specific year, but I believe it was around 1982. In uh, the small print there, it says that the manual is also available in five and a quarter inch floppy disks. So uh, that, that kind of gives you an idea of the era. This is another page of that parody. I just don't have time to go into all of the ways that it makes fun of scouting, but I think that the scout oath and motto are kind of fun. The oath says, On my honor, I will do my duty to stay lithe and well-toned, to help others if convenient, to suffer but not much, to keep alert in boutiques, to be well-fed and morally straight. Have a nice day. And then the scout motto says, Be insured. Over here on the side, it says there will be no official welcome from the Scoutmaster this year because we have just been notified that he has moved to San Francisco with his friend Randy. This page goes into some detail about the Scout uniform and camping essentials here. And that list has some fun things on it, like a white noise machine and a Geiger counter, a roach clip, and then the books that you need to have, How to Beat the SAT, Winning Through Intimidation, and Accessing Your School Database. Under the cooking essentials here, I thought that the duck press was kind of funny. And then in your briefcase, you need glowing campfire video cassette VHS. So just all kinds of uh, fun, odd, weird things. This last page, uh, not the last page, uh, there's, there's others, but this is the last one I'll show, uh, talks about the merit badges the scout can earn. Here's one that covers mutual funds. The fire safety merit badge teaches you how to react quickly if your blow dryer sets your tent on fire. There's one over here for lobbying. It says it's the only a a badge that can be bought. And down here at the bottom, delegating. Now, I might enjoy this more than some because I worked or volunteered as a scout leader for about 10 years and I was a scout growing up. It's, this is the kind of weird, wacky stuff you can expect from Playboy. $12.77 sent this to a buyer in Washington. This is exactly the kind of advertisement here that I consider my bread and butter. This one... Uh, Similar to one I talked about a couple of videos ago, this is a Bell Air Cobra called a P-39 aircraft by the Allies. This appeared in Fortune magazine in 1941, and it's showing here an image of the Air Cobra doing what it did best, which was ground attack and strafing, blowing up stuff on the ground, uh, I read a little bit more about this plane after the last video. I found that the Russian Air Forces used it to great success during World War II, and they called it the Kobrushka, which means Little Cobra. This ad sold for $23.77. It's going to a buyer in Oregon. That last advertisement went to a repeat buyer, this advertisement is going to a museum. It's a media museum in Missouri. This ad says Coke means Coca-Cola. Coke is the abbreviation of Coca-Cola, the registered trademark which identifies only the product of the Coca-Cola company. And I believe this uh, might be in response to that period in time when if you were in a diner or a restaurant and you ordered a Coke, they could pour any kind of a cola into your glass and not have to tell you that it wasn't Coca-Cola. So I think Coke got kind of upset about that back in the day. And so they were putting this message out and requiring people to tell you that if they weren't pouring Coke, Coke was not what you were getting. $18.77 sent this ad to Missouri. It appeared in the Quartermaster Review magazine in 1944. The next advertisement is for Pella Windows, 
a company based in Pella, Iowa, and this appeared in House Beautiful magazine in 1950. At the top of the ad there, it says you can say goodbye to all of these different window chores if you buy Pella windows. And it goes into some detail there about putting up and taking down screens and storing screens and the storm windows and all of that. It shows you some detail about how easy they are to clean. And it also says that the windows have dual glazing, which protects against winter cold and summer heat. $8.77 sent this ad back to its hometown in Iowa. This advertisement appeared in New Yorker magazine in 1958. It's one of those ads that just has multiple facets of appeal. It's got the Vespa, which is really cool. It's got the poodle in the basket for dog lovers. And then for the fashion folks or fashionistas, it's got the, the clothing angle because it's an advertisement for Elliott sweaters. I can't help but comment here that there was a past chapter where I was occasionally obligated to watch one of those movies that some people call a chick flick. In The Wedding Planner, Jennifer Lopez's character, Mary, had this Italian guy that was uh, chasing after her. His name was Massimo. Massimo had the same kind of goofy expression on his face as this guy here. So I can't help but mention that. Uh, again, 1958 New Yorker magazine, uh, $16.77, sent this ad to Tennessee to a buyer with a surname that sounds suspiciously Italian. Just like I did a little earlier, I'm going to show you two advertisements that went to the same buyer. Both of these also came from the 1953 Quarter Master Review magazines that we talked about earlier. Two different issues. This one, uh, they're both for snack foods as well. This one is for Southern Biscuit Company of Richmond, Virginia. The FFV stands for Famous Foods of Virginia. A close-up of the detail shows the kinds of snacks that they made, including chips and uh, cookies, orange thins, ham and cheese appetizers, and so on. $12.77 sent this ad to the buyer in Richmond, Virginia. The second is this quarter page ad. The first one is half page, by the way. This quarter page ad for Weston Biscuit Company of Cambridge, Massachusetts just shows chocolate chip cookies of the Weston's company. And $8.77 sent this to the buyer with the surname of Weston in Richmond, Virginia. I decided to wrap up the what sold portion of the video with this one right here because it really is visually stunning. It will display well. It's not an advertisement. It's one of those things that I classify as a magazine illustration. This is a magazine serial from 1936, Woman's Home Companion. It's called Bride's Progress, A Wedding Journey by Catherine Dos Passos. And you can see here that it's a, a bunch of different panels. This bride and groom are on their honeymoon in Jamaica. There's a lot of interest to see and read here. Uh, it's got views of Kingston Harbor and uh, a polo match going on. Tropical bird in the cage there. There's a, a mention of uh, voodoo. So it's got that angle. There's some things about this that are not politically correct. For example, the groom has a pet name for his bride that uh, wouldn't go over too well in modern times. But uh, in a plot twist, the former fiancé of the groom is on her way to Jamaica to confront the couple about their marriage. And so uh, just, just a pretty neat thing. And uh, I'm glad it sold. It brought a good price, $23.77. Sent this to a repeat buyer in California. 
as we close the window on the tropical paradise of Jamaica. Now we're going to talk about dipping our toes into the waters of increasing our listings visibility through the process of ending listings and using those to build new listings through the sell similar process. If you're not an eBay reseller or if you're new to selling on eBay, then that might sound complicated. Today, we're going to focus on the reasons why you want to end listings and sell similar. Next week, I believe that I'll go into some of the detail about how to do it. On screen right now, you're getting a candid look at my store numbers for traffic. You'll see there on the left side of the screen that organic impressions for the month of mid-March to mid-April is up almost 60%. Total impressions are up nearly 30% from around 3 million impressions to uh, 4,610,000. That's a huge jump over the prior 30 days. Now, over on the right hand of the screen, even more important numbers. Top 20 search slot impressions increased by 141.9%. The new number, 265,854. That's the number of times that someone searched for an item and my listings were in the top 20 search results. And the top 20 search results are really what generates the best sales. Now, the reason the most recent 30 days are so much better than the prior period is that, frankly, I'd taken my eye off the prize. I'd got distracted. I didn't set this practice as a high enough priority. And so this is something that I wasn't doing. As soon as I started doing it again, those results turned around. Now, impressions like we just looked at are an important part of the story, but here is where the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. My quantity sold is up 60% over the prior period. I had a total of 88 sales, 88 individual items sold to 81 buyers, and my average price uh, or average sales price is down a couple of dollars, but that resulted in increased gross sales for the most recent 30 days, almost 52% higher than the previous 30. As I said before, next week we'll revisit the topic to look at how to accomplish this process, how I do it, how many listings, how often, how you can do it too. So come back and see me again next week for that. Right now, let's take a look at that weekly recap screen. All right, looking back at last week, it was another great week at Blue Feather Ephemera. We sold 18 ads for $291.86. We had one situation where the buyer surname matched the name of the business advertised. We had three ads sold back to the city where the business was located. We didn't have any global shipping program sales this week, but we did have three repeat customers. I thank you for sticking around and watching this video and come back and see us again next week. Bye for now. Hey, while you're here, I want to invite you to visit my eBay store, Blue Feather Ephemera. The link is down below in the description of this video. I always say that if a thing was made, sold, collected, celebrated, or built, you can bet it was also advertised. Classic vintage advertising makes great decor for your bar, restaurant, man cave, salon, garage, anywhere the right vibe is essential. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, please hit the like button, share it with friends, and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time.